Hey there, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour and chit chat here. Uh, I like to make things from beginning to end with you here so uh, you can be part of the process the whole way and see the entirety of the process, um, which is a little different than just seeing clips of it everywhere. So awesome, you guys. We are going to continue on the octopus block from the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. So we have started to stitch it down. Uh, here we have some of our orange stitching around here. We have a little bit more there and then we're going to start on the octopus and the octopus we're going to try it with a yellow thread here. So that is the plan tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me everyone. I appreciate seeing y'all again. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, it's crazy. That is, it's just Monday. It's almost mid-August already. It feels like crazy. All right, I'm going to tip you around and we'll get stitching on this guy right away. All right. Oh, I gotta, we gotta address this guy yet. I need to, um, we need to look at the feed dogs on there at some point here. Maybe we'll do that later this week. Or maybe, maybe when this, this guy gets done, maybe we'll take, take a look at that a little bit. Hello, hello everyone. Okay, just getting settled here. All right, so here again is the octopus. It's by Rob Apple. Uh, so we are working on stitching all these lines down. Now he stitched kind of all over the place. Oh, he did. Look at this. He did stitch in here quite a bit. Oh, even like cut into, cut into the, um, coral a little bit there. I was thinking you can already see that we could just extend some of these little bloops would be kind of fun. Uh, because in the octopus, for sure, we're going to want to extend some of our stitching lines, I think, to define some of these legs and stuff a little bit more. Kind of like how I put a line right here. So, you know, while we have the orange thread on, it'd be fun to just add like a little bloop in there or something. I didn't realize this before, but there is a whole pile of cute squiggles in there. That would be another option. Um, this almost looks, this whole thing actually almost looks free motion quilted or like free motion um, stitched where he's just moving it around. So I don't know. Uh, right now I'm just still using the, uh, my normal like quarter inch foot and, and we're moving things. We're rotating the, the piece as we go versus, uh, just moving it around like free motion quilting. So anyway, I think, I think we'll just continue this today. So every, all my settings on my machine should be exactly the same as where we left them on Thursday, or on, on Wednesday, I mean. Um, so hopefully that's the case. All right. Get my, oop, there we go. Got my uh, LED light in there. Let's just get started. I'm not even gonna test it. Maybe that's a bad idea, but I don't care. We're doing it. Going for it. So I just want this last little bit here stitched. That's what I'm going to work on today. At least to start out here. I feel like I'm still learning my machine a little bit. That's okay. It's kind of fun. Fun to learn something new. So I'm just barely kind of tapping. Ooh. Oh, I thought I was Oh, I thought I was down there, but I guess not. We got a little farther ways to go. I am just tapping because I don't want it to go too fast. So with we're using a fatter thread and one of the tricks apparently with that I'm learning is to go a lot slower than you're used to because I don't want it to skip threads or anything. All right, I think we're done there. We just had that little bit to go yet. Uh, oh, you're not quite ready to sew on this one yet, Kathy. 
All right, so there we go. I'm going to pull these threads to the back and we'll tie them off. And then I think we'll go back and we'll add a little bloop there because why not? I think that'd be kind of fun. Oh, so I'm going to flip it around and find my stiletto here. That's always helpful. So I'm just going to pull on that bobbin thread right here and that will kind of pop pop the front thread to the back and then I'm going to pull pull that all the way to the back that thread and we're going to we're going to tie that off. Oh, that's weird, Nolene. Um, actually, try swiping or something, because I think you can swipe to make the comments go on and off. I think there's, there, I think there's like a special, some sort of swipe type action <laughs> to do to get comments going. Your block is in progress, Jennifer. Nice. All right, I'm going to pull this one up too. There we go. Popped right up there. And I'm just tying a little knot here. Uh, so I'm doing, I'm tying these off in the back because I want them to be secure, but I don't want to back tack uh, where you go forward and backwards and then forward again when you start and end a row. That kind of ties a, a knot a little bit, but um, I can also see that on the front, and especially with this fatter thread, we're using a fatter 12-weight uh, thread on the front here. I don't want that to be as uh, as visible. So there we go. It almost looks like hand stitching with this big thread, which is kind of cool. Oh, you can't see the comments either, and you have to keep swiping. Oh, for weird. Oh, thanks, Grace. All right, so I'm going to just add some bloops in there. I, I don't think I'm going to add these ones. Those ones are kind of weird, I think. Oh, and they actually might get sewn, like cut off by the quarter inch. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go boop, boop, boop. I think that's kind of fun. Adding a little something more into it. And again, the main reason I'm doing that is because I know for sure I'm going to want to do that with the octopus. And uh, I'm basically kind of continuing that idea in in the um, in the coral, just so the coral has that same look and feel. If I would just do outlines for the octopus, maybe I would only do outlines for this, but I want them to feel kind of the same. So I'm turning little by little. One more bloop. So I just drew these on with um, water syllabus marker. And actually, now that I'm doing it, I'm not sure I'm really following my lines very well. We'll see what this looks like. It'll be something. All right, let's see what that looks like. So I have not free motion quilted with this machine. That would be something interesting to try. I don't know if I'm quite ready for that. I don't even know if I can lower the feed dogs on this. I can probably take them out. The feed dogs are the little sawtooth guys. Well, that's kind of fun. <laughs> a little extra bloop in there, a little flowery bloop. It'll do. I should save, oh, I should save um, this for when I quilt the uh, whole block. I think, um, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to at least get some scrap stuff out and see if we can free motion quilt with this guy. For one, this surface is much flatter than, uh, than my other machine. And actually it's a little lower too, like about an inch or so lower than my other machine, which might actually be a little bit more comfortable on my arm. I think the neck here, um, or the throat, I always get, is it a throat or the neck for that space, the space in between um, in the machine there? I think I might be messing that up. I think it's the throat, not the neck. But regardless, I think this is about the same size as my other Kenmore machine. All right, I think this is it for the coral though. We'll switch over to the other thread. 
to get this tied. So the other thread, I think I got this as like a sample pack or something, all of, all of this thread, this Aurofil thread, it's 12 weight. But I suspect, I think that, um, this is cotton, but I think that my yellow stuff is wool. Um, and I think it's a little more delicate and it, it wants to tear and all that stuff, but we'll see how it works. Yeah, I think, Jane, I could. I think I could probably put an index card uh, or like a postcard. I, I did that with a postcard before. I uh, put a postcard over the feed dogs and then just poked a little hole in uh, where the needle would go through or like punched, like with a, with a hole punch. I punched a hole. That would probably work well. Uh, yeah, there's no like obvious thing here like I don't see anything to that to obviously like physically lower it uh, I could probably take it out though some something else to discover with the machine in a little bit here all right uh, let's uh, let's let's well let's switch the thread first and then we'll take a look let's we'll build we'll come up with a plan on uh, where to start and how to stitch this guy up but this is cute I, I like I like how this little extra little bit of orange orange thread added a little bit of dimension to to this front piece which I think is kind of fun all right let's back up a little bit here I'm going to attempt to uh, change the thread on this machine so this is that I call it the steampunk Kenmore it is a 1938 Kenmore sewing machine and I just love it's just like all the details of it are just so cool looking I think all right I'm just trying to ugh, I'm just trying to grab the top thread here all right I have to pay attention so I can remember how to put this thread back in all right I think I remember all right so uh, let me show you this so this is uh this is the 12 weight I believe it's cotton but look at this one is is wool I'm, I'm guessing doesn't like I'm guessing that might be mean wool I'm not positive but anyway look it's a little fuzzier you can see and I have stitched with it before and it seems more delicate like it it wants to unravel a little bit more and fray a little bit more so uh, we'll see how this works if it hopefully it'll be okay but I don't know hopefully we don't have too much trouble working with it all right I'm gonna get you like the curl squiggle? Oh, that's awesome. That's good to hear. Oh, the harp, the harp. Oh, I, I haven't heard that before. Is that really what this is called, the harp? Not the throat, that's kind of cool. The harp, I might call it that from now on. That's a fun way to do it. All right, I'm still getting used to, used to this. Now I gotta go through that same spot again, and then it has a little pulley that comes down here. Uh, we should probably test this just because this is a different thread. Maybe it will act a little bit different in the machine. I'm just trying to, it seems like it's frayed a little bit, but again, I think that's just the wool of it all. Has to get in this little hole here and ugh, hopefully we can thread it. So we are using a needle with a larger eye Oh yeah, okay, so Barbara says, I think Lana is wool, Lane in French. See, that's, I, I recognize that, the French. So I thought, oh, maybe it, maybe that's what they, maybe that's the same thing. Is So this is Orofil, that's, that's an Italian brand, right? Can't quite remember. Oh, I almost got it here. Oh, good, got it, yes. So this likes to unravel a little bit when I thread it. That's why I cut it again, just to give it a little, uh, a little sharper edge, like a cleaner edge. All right. So let's do a little test just to start out. I have um, just, here's some layers of fabric with that stabilizer in there, or the, um, the fusible, just to, just to uh, get a few layers in, because our octopus has a whole pile of layers. So let's let's just stitch a line and see how it fares. All 
right. Oh, let's get the needle up. I'm afraid of it rubbing, the thread rubbing on a lot of things and getting, um, getting frayed. So the back looks okay. We want we want it in this case to have the bobbin tighter, so it's pulling pulling the threads up a little bit. Uh, I think I think we're looking pretty good still. I'm okay with that still. Yeah, all right, I'm down with it. Let's. Uh... Oh yeah, we could use you could totally use this for embroidery as well. So this would give you a pretty thin line. We did a test actually once. Um, I should do another another video on this. I think I mentioned that on Friday. I'd like to do another video of uh, widths of thread when you stitch. But we did a test, and uh, two of these threads doubled up. I think was about equivalent to um, four strands of uh, embroidery floss. I think that's kind of what we what we came up with. So yeah, you could definitely use it for embroidery. And I think this wool would be very, very, very pretty. And I mean, we'll get a sense of that because th this almost looks like back stitches, right? So we're gonna have like that back stitch effect with this. So I'm gonna do something first. Let's, let's get up here. I would like to take a look at this octopus and see where we wanna stitch. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my water soluble marker out here again. But, you know, I want to extend some of these legs. So we want to stitch, you know, I'm going to have to stitch, stitch like these guys down, these yellow pieces. But at the same time, I would like to extend the legs. So I'm curious how they did it here. Oh, there's a whole lot of weird kind of shapes happening. So I don't know. That's... That's not too helpful. This is pretty free form here, but some things for sure. I mean, I'm not going to draw everything on, but I just want to make sure that I get some. We're definitely going to want this line here, which we'll do. Yeah, and so like this, this will cross over. So maybe this leg, maybe this leg like extends up here. Cause then it'll look like it's in front of this leg. So we could um, stitch, you know, we'll stitch all around here. And then when we come back up here, it'll go here. And this will still get stitched around here. Just kind of plan it out a little bit. So like this leg here looks like, it's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of a goofy shape. So almost like this leg comes down here almost and then continues right kind of looks like that and then this would be coming in front do you kind of see what I'm what I'm doing here I I just want to these legs to have a little shape to them I mean again this legs pretty goofy looking Maybe it cuts this way instead. Eh, nah, I don't like that. And I don't have to get so perfect on, on this either. So this leg looks like it's a heftier leg. Let's have this leg come out in front of the rest of them. Oh, nice Bonnie, that's exciting. Yay, I'm glad they're coming. Maybe this, whole shape keeps extending like we're continuing this s a little bit you know I think that's all I really needed to do I just wanted to kind of separate some of the legs from each other so basically separating this leg from this leg and separating this leg from this leg so um, and then this leg just to make it look at, like it's in front of these other legs I think we're fine for the rest of it so I think what I'm gonna do hmm the best way to tackle this. So I need to stitch down all of these yellow shapes. 
So I could start there in theory. Gosh, I don't know. I think we just start and see what happens almost. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just start. I'm gonna just start on this leg right here. How about that? And we'll stitch on the inside here, wrap our way around. We'll probably have to come back on that yellow and uh, oh, then keep going around here. All right, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go and go and see what happens. Because none of these really connect all that perfectly, it doesn't look like. You know, it's not like we're going to have a perfect, never ending um, shape unless we kind of make it a little bit more rough and raw looking, which is fine. That's how it looks like the designer did it, which is, which looked great. All right. I'm going to just start on this line here. And, you know, I, I drew this line so it goes into that leg, but I got to go a little bit further in because I need to stitch on the fabric. So I'm not going to follow these lines perfectly. Let's just start. See what happens. I think that's the plan. I'm getting too nervous about it. Ooh, and I went up pretty high there, too. But I'm going to keep my slow stitches just because I need to be extra careful not to break this thread or skip stitches, I think. So you can probably hear a lot of squeaking. That's me lifting my foot up and down on the, on the pedal. But you love Rob Apple projects. That's cool. Ooh, we got a big curve here. Cute though, it's gonna look cute. Oh, see, like that stitch looks like it went on top of itself. My motor was running a little bit there. I wonder if I have to tighten that um, motor pulley again. Pretty. Just gonna move these threads out of my way here. All right, here we're making a tight turn. Just keep my hand over here. Because I'm, I'm lifting the foot every time I turn so with the needle with the needle in the fabric so it has a place to pivot I don't want to take that out of the fabric all right I'm gonna stay on this yellow you know like the underside of the leg oh gosh it totally looks like it's fraying this thread so we'll we'll see how this how this uh, yellow thread fares but so far so good I think at least on the front but I can tell it's it, so wanting to fray it's actually almost like it's unraveling so I'm wondering if it should like lift like if I should put the thread on the on the ground and have it lift off of it instead of spool off of it that could be the case I don't know we're just gonna keep going All right, it's getting thicker here again. It looks cool though. I mean, it's really, really adding definition for sure. <laughs> Can you tell I'm totally concentrating? So it's feeling a little funny right now. I'm wondering if I'm getting it stuck on something. So we're just gonna keep going until it like breaks on me and uh, hopefully we'll be good.
All right, so here, just shape-wise, I think I'm going to go down to where my stitching here is and stitch over those stitches and then hit this other inside part of, of the circle. Instead of um, stopping and starting fresh, I just, I'm going to go over these stitches, so hopefully it'll be kind of invisible. We'll see. It's looking cool, though. So I'm going to be coming back up here, but at that point, I'll probably stop because there's, you know, I'd have to jump to the next thing somewhere. So I'll, I'll come up here, and then we'll take the thread out, we'll see how it's doing, and then we'll start up another spot. Like maybe we'll start here and do the other half of this, this leg. I think that's a good plan. So let's get this inner curve here. Again, I'm stitching over stitches I already have here. Take one more. All right, move it around. Now we're getting the inside of that like figure eight curve. We're starting with a weird spot here, trying to trying to figure that out before moving on. I think it's going well. Thread hasn't broken yet, so that's promising. <laughs> uh. So I measure if it's going well right now, I suppose. All right, and I think that's that. Let's see how we did here. All right, it's feeling okay. We'll pull those threads to the back, but uh, there we go. So we got, you know, wow, that, it really is adding definition to it. Gosh, we are, it really is, isn't it? Ooh, cute. Okay, so uh, we did, uh, we're kind of defining that this, this like whole leg, you know, both parts is in front of this other leg. That's why we drew this kind of line up here. Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, goofy anyway. We'll figure it out. All right, I think we'll pull these to the end and then we'll hit the other side of this. I don't want to go too far away from this because I don't want to forget, like, uh, forget the parts that we're working on. So let's let's take care of the back first. Ooh, let's look at the back. So I it, it did look like there were some weird parts where it caught my thread kind of funny when it when the needle was going down, but it's actually not too bad, especially compared to some of the other times we've used this thread. Um, this is actually not looking horrible at all, so I'm I'm happy with uh, the wool thread is working out so far. It is, I can very much tell that it's a different feel though, um, working with it than that, than the cotton orophil. I wonder if it shrinks, like in, um, you know, like in the wash or something. Maybe I should have tested that. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Good night, Arloa. All right, oop, my thread got caught back here. Let's pull it out. Come on, little baby stitch. There we go. All right, that knot is tied. Boop. All right, now let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think that's adding a lot of really fun definition to it. So I think I'm gonna start here and we'll work our way to here. Then I might backtrack just a little bit and then try and get this leg going and then come back up here to finish that shape. That maybe this leg. Okay, I think I got a little path drawn. Um, so this is that part, ooh, that looks good. So this is that part that I overlapped and you can hardly tell at all, which is awesome, which means I'm gonna try and do that a little bit more to save myself from having to undo it, like tie it off each time. Um, do I have my regular tension on? No, I had to change the tension a little bit. So because 
Uh, and we did that on Wednesday. Uh, we did some tests for that with the other thread, but because I am uh, using a fatter thread on top and a thinner thread on the bottom, I, um, I'm going to connect these. I loosened the top because I want that bottom thread. I want the, the bobbin to pull this fat thread through, uh, to the underneath a little bit more than usual. Um, because it's going to need that extra pull for that fat thread to get through the, the stitched holes, I think. So with the bobbin a little tighter, and I didn't actually tighten the bobbin, but the act of loosening the top makes the bobbin tighter. Or I mean, it doesn't, you know, you want the balance of the, the bobbin and the, the um, top thread the same. And uh, if one's off, then one inherently is the opposite. So the bobbin hasn't changed, but it is pulling on the thread a little bit more because the top is looser and that will pull the thread back a little bit. So I did change the tension. We were too loose to start off uh, and it was making too big of loops. Like the bobbin, the back looked too tight. The front was too loose. Uh, it was making loops on the back because the bobbin pulled it up through too much. Uh, so we made it a little tighter, or a little um, up the tension a little bit, and that seemed to do the job. Ooh, I am getting a little ways away from the edge here. It's hard to tell. Oh, he's kind of a little straight away. Big turn, and yep, I'm gonna come up here, get this leg going up. There we go, one more stitch. All right, and now I'm gonna backtrack down that leg a little bit. But there, we got the rest of that, the outside of that leg. So I'm going to backtrack and then I'm going to hook up and then start this leg here, which I think will be really cool. And now I'm looking, I kind of missed, I could have put like one stitch of orange right there, <laughs> but I think we're just going to leave it. Uh, we'll let it be. All right. So I'm going to go backwards a few stitches. I think one more. And now we'll get that leg. This leg will be cool because once we get this defined, I think you'll really see this uh, a lot more. Oh no, Barbara! Um, it seems like other people are having some trouble with the video as well. Um, not the video, but the not getting comments. I think there's a swipe thing that you can do. So I don't know, maybe maybe uh, maybe um, Facebook did an update or something, and now some functions different. Who knows? Oh, good night, Jane. Yeah, we'll be working on this for a couple more days. Yeah, just since I'm like slow motion stitching this thing, but I think that's it's gonna be worth it. I, I really like how this guy's turning out too. Oh, everything's good for you, Kathy. Yeah, see, it's just a crapshoot, I think, a lot of times. I think the stitching super slow slowly is helping this particular thread quite a bit because I know when we tried stitching a few other ones with this thread it was not doing well at all but it seems to be relatively okay right now I think it's more me stitching slow than than like the switch of the machine all right so this is one of those parts that's gonna to find the leg a little bit. Actually, now that I think of it, is this bloop part of the leg? I think this bloop might be part of the leg. Huh. 
Well, I'm gonna, maybe I'll, I'll switch to the inside here. I'm gonna stitch, because I have to finish stitching this part down. Actually, let's take a look at that. Let's just look at it here. Or let's look at it on, I think I might have messed up this leg. So, all right, this is, this is backwards, but, oh no, I still think that's, let's count the legs. Hold on a sec. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, I think, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is not another leg. So what I'm, what I'm like weirded out a bit is like this little bloop here, this little thing, I think, is that like the top side of, of this leg? Like kind of, I don't know, I can't really tell. I think it, it must be part of this leg because there's eight legs. So, so in theory, this leg looks like it's in front. Oh, I don't know, it's confusing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, because right now what I'm doing is I'm having this leg come up here, but I suspect that this is part of that leg, so... I don't know, I think there's a little bit, some goofy, goofy stuff happening with this design a little bit. So I'm, I'm gonna just finish tracing this yellow piece, um, because I need, to, I need to trace this anyway. Hmm. Yep. Yep. I think I gotta, I think I'm overthinking it. I just gotta let it be what it's, what it's gotta be, right? Ooh, pivot. Which doesn't make sense either because then this is in the front and the top of it is behind this leg. Like it, it physically doesn't make much sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna call this bloop kind of part of this leg maybe. Like it rotated and here he's showing the, the bottom of the leg here but this is kind of seeing part of the top. So I am gonna consider this a separate leg here. <laughs> like it matters that much. All right, but I'm gonna, I think we'll take it off now and then move to the next area. So here's it, it's coming along. The anatomy is messing me up right now. All right, we're still looking okay. Ooh, gosh, look though. Um, my machine must be getting dirty because it is picking up dust and stuff. <laughs> All right, must be time to, to clean this up. Interesting. That wool is collecting all the fuzzles from underneath. And then this is super loose here, but um, I'm just gonna leave it. That's not gonna be the end of the world and you know, it's not gonna come apart. So I'm not gonna worry about like stitching over that, that it's like super loose underneath. All right, let's let's worry about getting these threads up here. Oh yeah, I bet you the, this thread in particular is probably leaving a lot of dust behind. We could pop it open and, and peek. I think this just pops, pops right up. Still learning this machine. Yep, fuzzles, fuzzles everywhere. Ooh, geez, sometimes my hands just don't... Do I even tie a knot? I didn't even tie a knot. Sheesh. Get through there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the wool thread is uh, cleaning as it sews. That's a little magic trick. <laughs> I did get some pipe cleaners though, so uh, we could use those at some point too clean up the machine. I'll have to get those out here tomorrow. I bought some pipe cleaners for the purpose of um, cleaning fuzz out of sewing machines. So we'll 
Ooh, it might actually be within reach. We'll, we'll see what we can see. And if we see a pile of fuzzles, I'll grab one of those pipe cleaners and we'll try and clean it a little bit. I like how this is looking, though. I'm glad we stuck with this, uh, this big fat thread. I think that's just, uh, kind of a neat, neat look. Really defining a lot. So we got a lot of fun crossover -y type things. I think that's just kind of the nature of this particular block, so I kind of like it. So I am going to keep this line that I drew. I am going to keep that going up like that. And then we'll just do this bloop. And figure out the rest of this guy a little bit. <sighs> All right, so let's let's take a look at this quick. Gosh, I don't even know how we go about this. You know, why don't we play around with this actually a little bit? I think I have the screwdriver nearby. I think we can just unscrew this. I'm gonna have to move my little piece of tape. Ooh, I'm not sure I've done this before on this machine. Oh, there's another screw right there. Ooh, though, this looks like it might be taking off some of the surface a little bit. Oh, it looks like it's just leaving a residue or something. I'm gonna have to clean that up or oil that up. I don't like that. Well, that's good to know. It looks like there's some here, like someone else at some point put some tape up there. <laughs> we'll have to get a rig. Maybe it needs just like some oil or something to like throw on the top. Wow! Yep, that's a lot of dust. Holy moly. I definitely don't think I've done this before, so. <laughs> All right. Let's just play with this while we're here. So I got some pipe cleaners. Let's just run it through here. Yuck! Okay, let's get a paper towel too. Hold on. Oops. All right. Well, this had to be done at some point, right? Yeah, that's a lot. And you know what? I, I, I don't think I have done this before. I think, I think we just put this machine in that... Um, ooh, I, that means I haven't oiled this or anything yet either, probably. But when I bought this, I, we put it in the cabinet and uh, haven't really used it until now. So I think once we're, I'll just clean this out really quick, like what I'm doing now, and I'll screw it back on tonight yet. But I think, ooh, look, a scrub in there. I think maybe when we're done with this block, we should learn how to, um, learn how to oil this guy. Get him a, just use a damp cloth. Oh, for this. Oh yeah, you know what? I do have a quarter inch magnet um, on my other machine. I will have to go snag that and yeah, uh, just wipe this. Okay, so I'll use a damp cloth to wipe this off. It's up here too. And yeah, we'll forgo this tape and we'll use the magnet. I think you're right. I do have a couple of those somewhere. All right, I can see a little bit more down in here. Come on, stuff. There, got it. So I haven't used pipe cleaners for this before. Uh, I know it's been a recommendation from you guys and it is working swell. So you don't wanna use, I guess, canned air because that will just push all this more into the machine. It's just a bloop there that I wanna get. Let's thread this whole thing through. All right, well, that is significantly 
Um, better, isn't it? Holy cow. All right. Let's get back to it. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. All right. Um, get the face plate here. Or the... Ugh, that's gross too. All right, get this guy back on. So here's the feed dogs. Um, oh, I can, I can unscrew them. So there's a screw right here. Uh, I could just unscrew them and, and take the whole, the whole feed dogs off, which might be fun to try. Like, uh, not right now, I don't want to do it, but um, if we want a free motion quilt, I can just unscrew them and take them off. That would be fun. Because, I don't know, I'm digging this machine. It'd be nice to use it a little bit more. Although, um, I think the, so this has that motor pulley or that motor drive wheel. I can't remember. I think it's motor pulley, uh, but it just has a little rubber wheel connected to a motor and that rubber wheel is uh, moving the larger wheel versus a belt. So the, there's a belt in my other machine and like if the, ten, if the, um, Friction isn't perfect on this machine. It'll it'll just like slide or it won't stitch a stitch and That might be really annoying for free motion quilting So I'm thinking a machine with a belt versus this motor pulley system um, Would probably be better more consistent for free motion quilting, but it'd be fun to still give it a try because why not? All right Get that guy back for now Put a little our bobbin cover on. Let's pull this thread up to the top. How did it get down there? Oh, because I probably put the, the belt on top of it. Or the um, cover on top of it. Ooh. I think the bobbin came out. There we go. Now the needle's going down. I'm just bringing that, bo that bobbin thread up to the top. There we go. Now get that guy back on. Okay, <laughs> back to it. Let's let's uh, see if we can do this one little last bit uh, before calling it an evening. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start here. We're gonna do that line down to here. And uh, um, just go like this, I think. And then I'm going to have to take it off again because I don't want to go on this orange part. And then we'll have to go down here. And then we'll have to take it off again and go back up here. Ugh, that's a lot of, a lot of little taking it off and putting it back on. But oh well. It's kind of the name of the, na the game with this guy, I think. All right. We're back at it here. Oh, he's discovering something new. <laughs> All right, so I'm connecting it with what we already have there. All right, now I'm gonna rotate. Yeah, I think I need to come back up like a stitch. Oh, we got that funny little bloop underneath that we need to get to. Where am I going to do that? Oh, we're just going to have to start and stop a lot. That's fine. Actually, maybe I'll get it now and I'll just backtrack on top of it. So here's that extra little, extra little kind of bloop that I didn't, where the anatomy gets confusing. <laughs> I think we can just backtrack on these stitches if we're careful and no one will know so between the coral to travel the other leg the problem is I don't want to sew on the coral because I'm using a different color thread and I think you'll see it a lot so I want to kind of avoid that So I'm just going to go up to the coral. I think just because I'm lazy, I'm going to do one visible stitch here. 
even though I, I prefer it not visible, but we're doing it anyway. And then I'm going to go back this way. And you know what? I think I'm going to cheat again. I'm going to travel up this leg and then get the other side of this thing. Ha ha! Stain on the machine. All right, so now I'm going to get the other part of this leg. Actually, I'm going to go up one more. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. I thought my needle just broke, but it was just a trick of the eye. <laughs> All right. And I think that is that. Let's take it off the machine again. Oh, it feels weird. Well, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. All right, so we got kind of this little bloop under here. We got the, this leg in front. Uh, this leg started. I think that worked. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on, but there is a lot going on. I think that's the fun of it. So I think we're fine. Uh, I still need to go around this little leg here. Maybe we, we can get that done yet tonight, but let's tie off these threads. Um, I'll get this leg and then we get to start the whole rest of it. So tomorrow, that'll be good. All right. Um, get these threads. I mean, it's a lot of little little details we're doing, but I think it's it's worth it. It's looking pretty cute. I'm excited about it, and I'm just excited uh, because this red is working so much better than last time. And last time we did it, and again, I think it's just because we're going a lot, 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 lot slower. Not that we're speeding last time, but I think we probably were just stitching normally. This time we're stitching a lot slower. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm not sure we changed to a bigger needle last time either, and I think that was a big mistake, if that's that's the case. I don't remember. I think we did this on one or two other blocks. I heard a goofy phrase today that I've never heard before. So let me, let me know. I don't even know if I'm going to say it right, but let me know if you've heard this before. Um, it's a measurement of distance. So John said this to me earlier today and I've been thinking about it since, but he's, he was measuring like how big like a, a room was or whatever. He was saying that, it, you know, it's bigger than, you know, the room that we were sitting in. And he, his measurement of distance for like the length of the room he was talking about is a good throw's length away, like, or about a good throw away. Or that doesn't sound quite right, but a good throw. <laughs> but it makes total sense. Like if you're like throwing a baseball or something, you can picture, or a football or something, you can kind of picture how long a good throw is. And that is a good measurement of distance, <laughs> a good estimate of distance. I've never heard that phrase though before. Is, have you guys heard that? Is like there is a specific way of saying that? I guess I don't know. But I've been thinking about it. It's just so funny. All right, let's do this last little bit here. A good throw away. It wasn't a stone's throw, although that's probably the real, the real phrase, because I have heard a stone's throw away. You know what? I bet you that's what it was. I bet you he just, uh, I bet you that's the real, the real phrase. Because I, I have heard that. But I've never, I've heard the phrase a stone's throw away being said, and you know what it is right away, but I've never visualized that before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, like, oh, how far you can throw a stone. Okay. That makes sense. I can throw it about that far. You know, I never thought about the actual act. So, <laughs> my stupid uh, contemplation for the day, I suppose. 
There are a lot of little curves in this guy. That must be what he, he meant. The stones throw away. That must be where it was being derived from. Never thought about it that hard before. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, Bonnie. Where did Captain Hook get his hook? I'm assuming this is a knock-knock, not a knock-knock joke, but a, a, a dad joke. <laughs> All right, there, we got the extra little leg in there. Let's bring those guys back, these threads to the back. All right, two more little knots, and I think we will uh, finish it up here tonight, and uh, tomorrow we'll work on all those other legs. Oh, a secondhand store. Meh, meh. I should have figured that one out. I thought it would have something to do with R. <laughs> That's usually where I where pirate jokes go. But that makes sense. Secondhand store. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Which is funny because in my head, I was we have um Arcs Value Village by us, which is a secondhand store, and I was thinking Arcs Value Village. <laughs> so in my head, even though I was wrong, I'm kinda right. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this from above. See what we're what we got going on. Yeah, it's adding so much texture and stuff. Um, I think it it's defined against this coral a lot better now. And I actually like how much is going on. It just adds a lot. So what'll be cool is there'll be like so much texture and stuff down here, and then it'll open up a little bit, so there'll be a little less up in here, so it'll be um, some nice contrast, I think. I, I'm digging it. It definitely looks too like, uh, you know, big fat hand stitching almost. Like it. All right, so yeah, um, we could kind of go around that way. I think we'll probably just continue down here on these hefty legs and then work our way up to the head and this backwards arm up here. Cool. Yeah, and on, I can't forget these little little dots. We got to do something with those too. I do have um, some other. So actually, I just bought this jean thread. It might be fun to try this jean thread just to have tried it. That could be the blue. I don't know. We'll see. Not that far yet. Ooh, actually, we have some pretty gray too. This is back to the fifty weight. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Uh, we'll spend a whole day on the rest of this, I'm sure, yet. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around, and we'll call it an evening for tonight. All right, hello, hello, hello. Great for the bubbles, the uh, that, that jean thread. Yeah, I got that jean thread, because I was going to try that thing where you darn... Oh, I must have posted about this. Maybe not, but uh, where you darn by sewing over the hole, you must need a stabilizer, but by sewing over the hole in, a, in the jeans, but you follow like the look of the jeans. So the, like the, the threads of the jeans, like, so it almost looks like you've rewoven it. So it's kind of invisible. I was gonna attempt to try that with some of this uh, jean thread. Cause we got a whole pile of jeans that could have some holes uh, covered up, but there we go. Oh, definitely adding so much texture to that. That's going to be fun. All right. Making progress on this, buddy. <laughs> I like it. All right, you guys. Thank you again for joining me tonight here. Uh, I will get this up on YouTube when we're done for the night. Uh, so you can watch it again there. I know a lot of people prefer watching on YouTube uh, for sure. 
And uh, I'll be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central, uh, and that's 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, uh, here on the Penguin Fish page on Facebook. So have a great evening. Good night.